These days, it seems like every major tech company wants to have its own ecosystem. Google, Amazon, Apple, even Microsoft, they all have these walled gardens that they want you to enter, sometimes for as much as a few thousand dollars, where you use their hardware, their software, and their services exclusively. And then, once you're snugly tucked in, using company brand everything, they want you to then forget about everything that exists outside of that walled garden, and then just stay with them there forever, consuming new product every time it comes down the line. Now, there is a positive aspect to these walled garden ecosystems, where everything is developed by the same company to work together, well, when that happens, the things tend to just work well together. And that's pretty good from a user perspective. Most people don't want to spend a lot of time configuring and then getting all of their devices to play well with one another. They want them to just do the thing and do the thing well and do the thing right the first time. But there is a dark side to this. Say, for example, you go Team Apple. You invest thousands of dollars in your Mac, iPhone, Apple Watch, and so on. But then something changes. Maybe there's a software update to your products that you really don't like. It could be something as simple as a UI change. Or maybe you have a lifestyle change that Apple is less suited for, that the apps running on your phone is less suited for. Or maybe the CEO of Apple just decides to take a pro puppy kicking stance and you don't like Apple anymore for those political reasons. Whatever the reason is for you being irked by Apple, how are you realistically going to quit them? You've already been trained to use their software and if you jump to another platform, well, now you have to go through that learning curve all over again since these companies all load proprietary software onto their devices, you can't just pack up your iOS knowledge and then move to an Android or vice versa. These platforms also tend to have some apps that are exclusive to them. And if you're using any of those, well, the learning curve is gonna be even steeper when you switch platforms, assuming that there's even a comparable app available on the other platform. And then there's the fact that you can't really have a mixed ecosystem. If you, for example, decide to buy an Android phone, that phone is not going to play well with your Mac. You can't simply buy an Android phone and live comfortably within the Apple ecosystem. You're going to have to go get a PC and an Android watch as well. And once you've picked a walled garden to exist in, you're pretty much stuck there. Apple is your phone, Apple is your computer, Apple is your everything. It's almost like these companies took a page out of the pimp handbook when they developed these ecosystem. A pimp convinces his employees that he is everything to them, their boss, their landlord, their daddy. The employee's entire foundation is based upon him. Scale this up to a few million users and you've got a major tech company and their walled garden. But there is something else outside of the Apple, Amazon, and Google plantations. There is a rogue group. There is the Linux user. Not only is there not a full lockdown ecosystem that exists here, but there is typically a push for as much of the desktop to be free and open source as possible. And this open nature of Linux gives way to so many possibilities. I mean, there is so much variety just in choosing a desktop OS that it can be intimidating enough to a new user that it scares them all the way back to the proprietary plantation where they think that they'll just have a better life, a simpler life where they don't actually have to make decisions. Microsoft or Apple can make those decisions for them. But there's a bit of a crisis here when it comes to the future and the market share growth of Linux. It seems that ecosystems are really the way of the future. 
And despite how much I personally don't like them and the idea of being dependent on just one or a small handful of companies for all of my technology needs, it seems like Linux is going to need to develop some kind of an ecosystem for it to grow. And in a way, this does seem to be occurring, at least with hardware. Now that there is a Pine phone, a Pine tablet, and of course, Linux itself, the desktop OS, can be installed on most desktops and laptops, but there still isn't really any sophisticated way that's out of the box for syncing data across these devices like you could in the walled gardens of Apple, Google, or Amazon. The best option that generally exists out there is to set up a home FTP server with scripts on your devices that check for the relevant folders and files to see if there's any updates and then sync them together. But asking everybody to implement this themselves is too much. That's asking way too much for most of your end users to do. And then there's the fact that a Linux ecosystem in and of itself would pretty much go against the Linux community. A lot of people switch to Linux in the first place to avoid the spookiness and potential bloat that comes with a walled garden. Instead, they tend to go the lead approach of just coming up with your own methods to sync things up, like the FTP server that I mentioned earlier. Ubuntu even tried to implement a way of syncing things across multiple devices with Ubuntu One, but people criticized it for being too spooky, as they probably should have considering some of the other things that Ubuntu's done in the past with selling data to other companies. And there really hasn't been any attempt to implement something like this since then. So if a Linux ecosystem were to ever come into play, it would have to work well. It would have to be open source and not collect any user data that could then be sold to a company. And it would probably also have to work across multiple different distros so that you're not forced to use something like Ubuntu. And that alone would probably be the most difficult part of implementing this since Everyone has their reasons for using their distros. Some people stick to a distro very religiously, while some people are distro hoppers that try something out every other week. And at the very least, if the syncing were to be available on Mint, Manjaro, and maybe a couple of other Just Works distros, those could be used by the refugees of the walled garden for an easy transition and of course, the seasoned Linux veterans could use their leet distros. There's a lot of paradoxes that have to be overcome to make something like this possible, but I do hope that one day someone is able to do it.